Are you feeling stuck and unable to write anything meaningful? Are you feeling frustrated due to not producing the word count that you wanted? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to explain how I approach my writing and how I recommend my students to approach writing any academic work, including their dissertation. And guess what? It doesn't start with writing. Many students get very frustrated because they are under pressure to write and nothing comes out. And this pressure comes from supervisors and tutors. They ask their students to start writing from an early stage or to bring certain number of pages or words. This strategy is not necessarily wrong, but it's not the one that I use. I'll start by explaining what the most effective approach is, in my view, and then I'll move on to demonstrate the approach using an example from a research paper that I'm currently working on. Hopefully, by understanding the process yourself, you can consider adopting it, and if you do, I'm confident that you will be able to progress a lot faster and, when the time is right, come up with much better writing. So what's the process like? The process involves dividing the task in two. One is doing the work, the other one is writing about what you've done. Because if you don't do the work before you start writing, you have nothing. What are you going to write about? So the rush to start writing is not a good one. You have to sit down, do the work, and ignore the writing in my view, and then once you've done the work, as you're going to see in the example later, it's actually quite straightforward. I often say that 80% of the work comes from actually doing it, and only 20% of the effort is required to writing about what you've done. If you are a new student, if you are an experienced uh, researcher and writer, then it may be 70-30 because you will also have to learn how to write. But for an experienced academic like myself, if I have to write something, it's probably 10 to 20% of the entire effort. In any case, whether you are an experienced researcher or a novice researcher, the process is the same. The focus should initially be on doing the work, and then once you've done the work, you can start thinking about how you're going to write about what you've done. You can now see bits of uh, literature review that I'm currently doing. And the topic of the paper for which I'm uh, reviewing the literature is on managing expectations in events. And I read lots of literature on managing expectations. And as I read, I came up with the key themes that I was finding in the literature. Uh, and here you've got four of them, sources of expectations, expectation management aims, uh, what happens when uh, expectations are poorly managed, and what specific activities are involved in managing expectations. And as I read more, I started to find content about each of these themes. So what you see is actually the stage of doing the work. I started reading the literature, identifying key themes and sub-themes related to each of those themes, and I kept adding content the more I read. Eventually, I got to a point where I was satisfied that I had read a lot and enough to start writing, and therefore I started writing based on what I had done. You will see that the first point has got some text between brackets, and I use those as an opportunity to write down any ideas that come across my mind while I'm doing the work. I write it down straight away because, you know, maybe a month later when I'm writing about it, I'm not going to remember it. So it's very important that you keep track of your thoughts and you write them down as soon as you have them so that you can consider using them later when you are writing about what you've done. In particular, I want to look at bullet points two and three. So let's look how we can move from the doing. We identify these two key themes and several sub-themes, in this instance, three sub-themes within each of the main two themes. And let's see how we can turn this into proper writing, something that could feature in your dissertation. So the first question that I ask here is, what is the common theme? Obviously, I selected these two because they have a common theme. And here the common theme is that both bullet points focus on the reasons why expectations 
should be managed. How would we translate this into writing? We could start by saying that the literature has widely documented the reasons why organizations should manage expectations. So we are making a major observation here, which is actually the conclusion of our argument. And if you don't know what an argument looks like, check the video on writing strong arguments. The link is in the card on the top right hand side of your screen and also in the description below. So we identify the common theme, but actually the two bullet points, they focus on different elements of that common theme. Can you figure out what the two sub themes are? Can you identify the difference between them? The overall theme is the same, but they try to address the main question, the reasons why organizations should manage expectations using a slightly different perspective. One focuses on the benefits of managing expectations, while the other one focuses on the drawbacks of not doing it. So here we have a dual perspective on the same topic, reasons to do it and the consequences of not doing it. How can we write this in proper text, something that could feature in the final dissertation? Let's look at the first paragraph. So we could turn those three bullet points and the heading into something like, researchers have noted that managing expectations successfully leads to improved overall project success, and then the reference, avoids disappointment, and then the reference, and contributes to co-produce expectations and finally the reference to back up that claim. With regards to the second bullet point, we could write it the following way. On the other hand, when expectations are poorly managed, various negative consequences for the organization will be brought about, including reduced organizational legitimacy, and reference to back it up, dissatisfaction, and reference, and abandoned relationships, and reference. If we bring the three sentences together, this is what it looks like. We've got a full paragraph, including 80 words. A paragraph that is very good writing, that is analytical, and if you don't know what analysis means, you can watch the video on the intellectual ladder. The link is on the right-hand side of your screen and also in the description below. If you're finding value in this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Dissertation Academy YouTube channel as this will help me to grow the channel. I've learned to use bullet points to do the work. It's what works for me and there are many benefits of doing it that way. But I've seen students and colleagues doing it in a more visual way. And now with so many apps and softwares, there are great visual tools that can also be used to keep track of all the main ideas and sub ideas. So you can look at a network of concepts like the one you see, or you can look at uh, discrete categories and subcategories as in this example. So what do you think of the process that I've just explained? Do you find it useful? Do you think it can help you to be better at writing your dissertation? Let me know in the comments what you think about it. I would love to hear your views. I like to do the work around bullet points because they bring many advantages. The first one is the flexibility in adding, removing, or moving content. And this is really important because a literature review can be quite messy at times in the sense that you're finding a lot of information that initially does not make sense. And then as you read more, you start to make sense of some of it. And then eventually you start making sense of a lot of it. And that requires you to shift ideas around, remove them and add them as you see fit. So that flexibility for me is very important and bullet points do address that flexibility. The other one is the flexibility in terms of adding or removing levels, but more importantly in adding levels. As you read more, you are going to add more content to key ideas that you already have in your structure. So that flexibility in adding levels is very important. And sometimes the opportunity to add sub-levels, i.e. detail some of the previous levels, is a very important one and a very necessary one. So that flexibility in playing with the levels is also for me a big plus for bullet points. The third benefit of using a bullet point structure is that it makes the writing straightforward. 
As you've seen earlier, for me it was very straightforward to write two paragraphs based on the two bullet points that I have prepared before. Because you can use the text, you don't need to write anything new, you just need to wrap up what content you've got there around a nicely written sentence. And that's very important for me. I don't want to be writing and rewriting again. I want to have the key content there and then just work around that content, adding whatever words are needed to make the argument clear. There is one drawback of bullet points, and it is that it's harder to see the big picture. When you have 10 pages of bullet points, it's not easy to keep track of everything. And visual methods have a benefit there because they are actually designed to provide a lot of meaning uh, in a short uh, visual space. So maybe there's a balance to be had if you find that the bullet points do not allow you to see the big picture. Maybe you can use some visual method to look at the big picture and leave the detail to the bullet point structure. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed learning about this strategy. See you in the next video.